The things I'll do to make YouTube videos these days. Whatever. Epic fear. The Wacky World of Multimedia J. It's nice to see the 80s have finally arrived in PCMR land with these cheap mechanical keyboards with the fixed color switches that try to mask their cheapness with a bunch of rainbow effects. I mean, what is this? An Atari 7800 logo? <laughs> I remember when there were rainbows in like Atari logos and stuff back in the 80s when like CGA monitors and color monitors were first becoming a thing and folks were like, hey look, this monitor can display a rainbow! And that was like a selling point or something like that. And so you saw a bunch of rainbows all over the place in the 80s, not just because of flashy new wave colors and stuff like that. So what this is, looking all nice and pretty and uh, better than just the blue and purple of my usual dark mode theme, what we have here is the Aula, A-U-L-A, is that Aula or Aula? The A-U-L-A, whatever it is. The Aula F2088. It's a cheap mechanical keyboard from Amazon with blue switches and typewriter style keys. So it's a bang for buck type thing for me because this thing should answer a lot of the questions that I have about um, certain types of cheap mechanical keyboards and the viability of cheap mechanical keyboards uh, while, of course, looking like something out of an arcade back in the 80s. <laughs> hey, you know, nothing like adding a little color to your setup, except everything else I have is Tron Blue, including the Windows 10 background. Whatever. Either way, there's a couple of uh, unfinished business loose end type things that I want to take care of with this whole keyboard thing, and uh, I guess you could say that if I went to all the trouble to get something like this that looks like some strange cross between a keyboard, a typewriter, and a Christmas tree, um, this whole insane membrane keyboards versus mechanical keyboards thing has finally jumped the shark on this channel. Um, so let's do what the Zoomers would want me to do and take the L, as they say, and check this thing out. Alright, first order of business, maybe it's because I'm old, but this button, this knob is a volume knob that you can push to mute, which is good, and you can hold it down and it lights up rainbowy like the rest of it, and you can adjust the effects. You can turn everything off with a little bit of brightness, with a brightness control by spinning it, or you can push the button to go to some other feature, and I think I want to have everything turned on for this. This is one of those cheapo mechanical keyboards where you can't control the colors, they just have rainbow stuff and flashy effects to try and make up for it. You'll see this all over the place, but there's the color. There's the color spectrum that we're looking at when it's not blinking or doing some other weird effect and stuff like that. So I've been curious about what mechanical keyboards are like at the low end, and every so often, despite my hatred of them, I'm curious about blue switches. This thing has blue switches, blue square switches, actually. Hey, look, a blue switch, therefore it's click, 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 click. These things are like the bane of my existence on uh, Twitch. You know how many times I stop watching a small Twitch streamer because they have a blue keyboard? Because, oh, a mechanical keyboard is what you need as a gamer. Then they get a blue keyboard and they mic themselves to where you can hear all the keyboard noise because they just have their, their microphone over by their webcam or something. They use like a shotgun mic or something. And so all throughout the gameplay, all you hear is all the clicks. Click, 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 click. And I think this is actually a bit softer because it's typewriter keys. So here's the thing, also we have this typewriter style, I've seen this in boutique keyboards from ASIO that are like a hundred plus dollars. This is not one of those keyboards, it's 40 on sale for 40 right now, which is cheaper than some membranes I've gotten over the years, but it even has a magnetic wrist rest. And I think based on how these things work, this might be interchangeable with the one on the ASIO keyboard. So 
besides, you know, playing with typewriter keys and stuff like that, and blue switches, are they really as bad as I think they are? Could I really put up with them? I also want to just do a little experiment with this and really answer the question, how much of your mechanical keyboard experience really comes down to the keycaps? Because with mechanical keyboards, you can just replace the keycaps, essentially replacing the buttons and what your keyboard feels like anytime you buy a new set of keycaps. Just put them on the switches if they're compatible. And number one, you can change the feel of your keyboard. Like I could take this typewriter type setup and make it more like a regular keyboard if with some extra caps I have from my ASIO, which I might want to put on here and see what it feels like. Or, if your keyboard's getting worn out, unless it's like marks on the wrist rest or something like that, you could just get a set of keycaps and replace the keycaps and it'll feel like a brand new keyboard again. Just clean the base, put the new caps on, get rid of the worn ones, and voila, you're back. I also am curious if maybe this this keyboard was not actually designed for typewriter keycaps because if we pull the cap, if we pull out that escape key again, to get the whole typewriter feel, they actually come up a little off the base. So if you look at the, the volume knob over here, it's a standard volume knob you'll see on cheapo mechanical keyboards, which I like having an actual volume knob to adjust the volume on the system, but the knob is actually shorter than the surrounding keys, so it makes it a little annoying to get in there and turn. So I'm wondering if we put different keycaps on this, will everything be shorter and line up with this knob a little better? But at least you can push it to mute your computer. But I like having a knob instead of one of those slide your finger thingies and an instant mute for certain things here and there. The cheaper keyboards out there, oops, seem to have these little things. So I'm curious if this is some kind of generic design. And the only reason this company has different SKUs for this keyboard is because they're putting different keycaps on them. Because when I Google search the make and model of this keyboard, some of the YouTube videos initially evaluating these things and doing reviews on them show regular keycaps. So why don't we answer pretty much every remaining question I have about mechanical keyboards and see just what it's like now that mechanical keyboards have gotten cheap enough that they're no longer, well, they, they can still be an elitist thing for PC gamers who will spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars on the right mechanical setup. Yes, there's rich kid toys out there that are mechanical keyboards and some YouTubers make fun of them. But for those of us who actually want to, you know, not blow all our money on a keyboard, what's it like? now that mechanical keyboards are overcoming some of their cost disadvantages versus insane membrane keyboards, is they inherently will cost more because they're more complicated to make. First, let's try these typewriter keys out and see how I like them. All right, so first we'll do a little let's play type thing, <laughs> if you want to call it that. I've been curious about typewriter style keyboards for years and I've seen some boutique models advertised for over a hundred dollars to get a keyboard that resembles a Smith Corona in terms of, well, typewriter style keys. What is that like? Let's try some sentences here. I also checked the wrist rests too. They're both magnetic wrist rests, but they're incompatible between this and the ASIO board because of differences in the dimensions. Let's try typing. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their, their party. Once upon a time, there was a computer nerd named Jay who did stupid stuff, ugh, stuff on you. Oh, this is YouTube. Like mess around with old computer computers and crappy, ugh, crappy. <laughs> ah, I hit the space bar twice. Mechanical key or did uh, maybe I thought I did. Keyboard. Okay, this sucks. All right, first problem. If you're a touch typer, you may be like, oh, this is like vintage and stuff. But the problem with typewriter style keys is it's way too easy to fat finger them because look how close they are where they come together. It's way too easy, like the number pad. It's way too easy to fat finger if you're not hitting the keys dead center. So if you're not hitting, and even then still, it's pretty easy to take the other one down with you if you're not totally dead center on the right key when you go to uh yeah, so it is worse than square keys square keys taper off in the middle so you're less likely to accidentally hit two of them if you're not completely on center so i, I don't know i mean i'm not i'm not from the typewriter days maybe my dad might like this setup more but i think what i'm going to do now 
is I'm going to completely replace all the keycaps on here with the original keycaps from my ASIO mechanical keyboard and we'll see how different it is. I mean, it is going to be a blue switch keyboard no matter what. When we get rid of the gimmick of these typewriter style keys, can we just replace cheesy McDonald's toy, you know, thin plastic, maybe fake metal paint typewriter style keys? Can we just replace these keycaps with something that feels a little better and get a better typing experience? Let's find out. Getting there, got most of these things off, but my suspicions were confirmed. Look at all the scuff marks on the bottom of the space bar. So that's metallic paint that the metal supposedly is actually metallic paint. This will probably scratch it off and flake off and eventually just be all plastic. So yeah, cheapo keyboard. You might want to replace the keycaps to upgrade it to something that feels better. But yeah, clicky clicky blue switches. I normally don't like clicky switches, but I'm curious what the keycaps are gonna do because when you push them the normal way, they don't seem to make a lot of noise. I wonder. Kind of looking a little more dark and sinister without its lights. Let's actually turn the regular light back on. It actually looks kind of like a Digital Media Pro from the 2000s. Back in the days when two-tone silver and black was the popular, well, style to it. Maybe we could use this with a silver bullet, I don't know. And then just turn the lights off. But, uh, I think it got louder since I got rid of those, yeah. I think it got louder since I got rid of the typewriter keys. <laughs> I definitely noticed the clicking a heck of a lot more. They're over in the box, by the way, along with all the key pullers from these mechanical keyboards. Let's turn this thing back on. Yeah, so the effect is a little more muted since we have uh, dark keycaps over everything. But, you know, a little less pretty in favor of feeling more like a normal keyboard. So it does its thing, and then it does one of those, and it, well... <laughs> I don't get why it turns off while Windows is booting. Then we have this. Okay, we're back online. This is definitely louder. Let's try typing with it. All right, I've never been a fan of these kinds of keyboards, but just for the heck of it, let's satiate our curiosity here. I've never been a fan of the whole, nah, <laughs> the whole blue switch mechanical gaming keyboard thing because to many PC gamers blue switches or just having a mechanical keyboard at all is the default option with little thought given as to the alternatives and various switch types unless they spend tons of time watching YouTube videos and becoming familiar with the numerous switch types and manufacturers. And just for noise only, let's type a bunch of gibberish. And if we were gaming, it would sound kind of like this. This is one of the reasons why I preferred brown switches over blue switches. They're closer to the quietness of membrane keyboards and without getting all rubbery because of being membrane. So it's kind of like hits the best of both worlds, especially if you're using a keyboard as a gaming controller. <laughs> did I almost save this thing? Uh, I think I did hit save. Don't save that, please. Either way, this is the blue switch experience. It is better it is better with regular square keys. Uh, if you like the typewriter gimmick, you're more than welcome to knock yourself out with these darn things. But based on based on the build quality, these cheap things, I think the paint's gonna flake off and you're eventually gonna have like probably white plastic, same as the stuff that the center that the center thing is. You'll probably wear off the metallic paint and have plastic sticking out of the edges. It's probably better just to get better keycaps. But it's interesting because, yeah, I mean, this is this does feel better now that I it is clickier because it's a blue switch keyboard, but it definitely feels a little better now that I've switched out those uh, horrible plastic typewriter keys with real keys. And the thing is, these aren't even aftermarket. These are the default key. These are the default keycaps that came with my ASIO a couple of years ago, 
that I just kept around in case I needed them. I guess I needed them now. <laughs> Uh, plastic on the bottom, a little bit of metal in the middle for the main plate in terms of giving it some sturdiness as well as something for the magnetic wrist rest to stick to. But by and large, uh, these aren't even anything special. They came with the ASIO keyboard a couple of years ago, and uh, but they're better than what came the cheapo ones that came with everything. Just put all the keys in the right place, takes a while, and uh, they line up and stuff. It's just too bad it's not RGB. It does teach me a valuable lesson, though, about, you know, mechanical keyboards. Check the materials and what they're made out of. In this case, there's a metal plate on here, so that helps add some sturdiness to it. And then don't worry about the keycaps. Get some cheapo keycaps to start, and then just pick your switch type, and then have some keycaps in mind, like puddings or PBTs or something along those lines. And you don't have to spend, like, hundreds or thousands of dollars to get into mechanical keyboards. You just gotta know how to take care of them in terms of uh, oiling or cleaning switches if they have problems like what my last uh, keyboard had. Now, I'm gonna use these interchangeably to play some ESO over at the main area, and let's just get the experience of blue switches versus brown switches. All right, let's begin with the baseline of the current brown switch setup with the ASIO keyboard. We'll send the Cleric around to smite a bunch of stuff because that'll use the keyboard more than the mouse. Not that using the mouse would make much of a difference anyways, because this Logitech G mouse is one of the quietest mice I have in terms of mouse clicks. Let's get everything in. Uh, let's get everything in position here. Let's just go around uh, doing some combat and some some moving around and stuff like that. And we'll do a little bit with the sound in the game going, a little bit without the sound in the game going. This might be a little boring because this is what I already use, and it's. This might be boring because this is what I already use and I picked brown switches on purpose for the specific thing. Coming over from membranes, which are like controller buttons, I wanted something that would stay quiet while giving the feel of mechanical stuff. And maybe if I slam buttons down I can hear the clack of the switches, but otherwise it's just like this. You hear the game more than anything else. Now, let's shut up for a bit, fight some more characters, fight some more uh, of these tigers or terror birds or whatever and then let's turn off the sound to get just the keyboard noise <laughs> mute this is similar to what we did with uh, mechanical versus membrane Not that bad. Louder than a membrane if you mute everything and you're not wearing headphones. So but it's, it's way easier to stay quiet with these brown switches. That's about as loud as it gets. Let's switch the keyboards around and switch to blue switches. All right, blue switch rainbow keyboard time. Let's see, uh, the default switch for so many people that want to get mechanical keyboards. Let's see here. You, are you kidding me? I can hear literally everything and it's annoying. Yep, click, 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 click. Now imagine if I was a badly mic'd Twitch stream and, you know, you were watching this too. <laughs> You're watching this, you can hear every single, literally every single button press. I can hear it. <laughs> the thing is, if you get into most of what you do involves button presses, so if you don't have a way of muffling those, you hear a lot of extra clicks. <laughs> Fortunately, this thing has plenty of key rollover, so I hit my multiple buttons at once, but I'll still hear them. <laughs> Uh, can get some more, uh, find a bigger group of enemies here, and then we'll hit mute. There we go, two terror birds at once. I hear literally everything. It's like, you might as well be shouting every single time I press a button, you press the button, you press the button. How do people play like this? I, they're told mechanical keyboards are better, and then they have to put up with this crap. <laughs> It'd be fine for typing, so you can you know, hear the clicks every time you type and tick off your roommates or whatever. 
but all right, let's mute the sound. Prepare for pain. Come on. Ah. Who could put up with this? There is no way to there's no way to quiet this down. You can push the buttons more gently on the brown switches, but because these click, these blue switches click, literally every time you press anything to where it actuates, it will make noise. Uh, it just gets so annoying. Uh-oh. Uh, whoops. Just doing what I normally do with a caster, trying to get some distance. <laughs> this is so bad. And you have all these people out there they're Twitch streaming with a shotgun mic or a webcam mic, and you're hearing this in the stream. And then they're sitting there wondering why people aren't watching them. Like, why would you want to hear this if you could instead... Why would you want to hear all this extra noise if you could instead watch somebody... Come on! Other spell, other spell. Why would you... <laughs> gotta smite these things. It just reminds you of just how much you hit the buttons and put wear and tear on your keyboard when you play with, with blue switches. How could you watch somebody with all this extra noise when you could watch somebody with a better setup who, you know... <laughs> you could watch somebody with a, with a better setup who doesn't have this extra noise and you just hear the game or you just hear them. You don't hear this crap. Come on! Cast the debuff. Ah! Come on! Of course, I am playing a caster, which requires more keyboard presses anyways. Let's get some of these zombies here. These Khajiit zombies. <laughs> but I think the noise... I think the noise speaks for itself. Can't attack that. That's wildlife. Literally, it's like someone might as well yell in your face that you're pushing a button every time you push a button. Uh, like, there's no way to avoid it. You can't be gentle. It will always click every single time. How do people put up with this stuff? And why is this type of keyboard switch so popular? Okay, just for fun, I went and got the Rosewill. <laughs> Brown switch, but it's a little bit more hollow than the pudding keycaps on my ASIO. So uh, let's do the same thing here, although this doesn't have a mute thing, so we're just going to do the finger spin thing to turn the volume all the way down. Brown switches, a bit more clack in the keyboard though, because they don't have custom keycaps yet. Compare this to that click fest we just had earlier. Let's see here. The thunderstorm in game. Let's go find some monster, or some hostiles to attack. Not necessarily monsters, but they're not passive wildlife either, like that antelope. Alright. There's wolves around. Let's see here. Where is it? There we go. Oh, they're jackals. Let's see. Kind of sad. They're like little puppy dogs. Let's take out that necromancer. Take the enemy down quickly. It's a little bit of noise, but it's all just a side effect of hitting the buttons harder. Let's turn the sound all the way down. Just get some of that uh, clack, clack, clack brown switch noise with a uh, less uh, without putting switches. This, this is louder, but it's just. It's just, you can go easy on this and just get a little bit of a uh, little bit of noise there, but it's not like you get the click no matter what. Uh. Well, let's do it without the noise. Bunch of jackals. So you may, this is like typing to an extent. Uh. Well, I think the blue switch keyboard is good for typing. It's definitely kind of fun to type on from time to time. Might even put the typewriter keys back on there just for the heck of it. And, uh, oops. <laughs> heal up, heal up. Yeah. Let me take out this allet here with a couple of spells and then get back on the mount. So you can hear this a bit more, but this is default keycaps on a cheaper brown keyboard. Versus the ASIO, which has uh, HyperX puddings, which I think changed 
some of the uh, noise profile as well as how solid the keys feel. These keys feel a lot more hollow. I could switch out the keycaps with the ASIO, but hey, you know, don't, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Switch, I could always switch the keycaps with the ASIO and see how much of a difference the puddings make. Although I do like the puddings, which is one of the reasons why I didn't keep using the default keycaps that are now on the Blue Switch keyboard. But I think it's just the sound difference between the click fest and a little bit of clack here and there when I hit the button hard. But, I mean, I could always just take it easy on the keys and make it quiet, or turn the sound on on the darn game. And if I wear a gaming headset, it'll kind of muffle the keyboard noise anyways. Alright. Well, this has been interesting now, hasn't it? Okay, so gaming with blue switches is like popping bubble wrap as you play. Let's try and salvage this one last time by trying to type really fast with the blue switch keyboard. One of the things that people like about blue switches is not having to bottom out the keys in order to type. And I've noticed this on some mechanical keyboards on some old computers before. Let's make something up and then we'll see how fast I can type with this stuff. If I can start with the right shift key here. Once upon a time, there was a nerd named Jay. Jay thought he was hot stuff with computers and multimedia. He made this YouTube channel and went nuts with it. Blah, 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 blah. Ugh. Maybe in some previous decades, people could type without bottoming out keys, but even with the clicks, I just can't do it, lol. <laughs> I guess I'm not used to these tactile bumps, but at least my curiosity about blue switches is satiated. And I know they suck for gaming. I suppose we can leave it at that. Alright, well I suppose this is where we can call it with this little uh, blue switch experiment. <laughs> oh man, there's a reason why I stayed away from blue switches and I've been very sharply reminded as to why. But uh, it's a curiosity or a scratch the itch type thing. But maybe some PC gamers in the 90s who had clicky tactile keys on like an IBM PC at home or something might like these things. But uh, I guess it is possible then to buy a cheap mechanical keyboard and upgrade the feel through some better keycaps. As long as the base is made out of solid material. But this rainbow thing, I don't know. <laughs> I prefer keyboards where I can customize everything with a volume knob. There is a keyboard out there that costs about the same that is full RGB, but I think I've uh, had enough of this whole keyboard thing for now. So we'll just uh, show the regular key version of the pretty light show that we showed earlier, if this thing will even stay focused with these lights. Um, I think it's because of this monitor that's messing it all up. I think it's the V-Sync from the monitor, so let's darken it up here and oh yeah, all right. Let's put one of the pretty uh, things on here. Push, hold for three seconds, turn on rainbow mode, and then hit the button. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's crazy what screwy lights we can put at everything these days. <laughs> oh man, where's the one we had at the beginning? This is close to it, but there's something. This was it. <laughs> the snake pattern. <laughs> Insert quarters to begin. Remember, winners don't use drugs. Those of you that remember the arcade machines with that thing from the FBI will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, that's enough goofing with uh, cheapo mechanical keyboards for now. 
there's far better things I could be doing, and uh, I think you folks know know that there's far better things that I could be doing. Anyways, Shark Jumped. Till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.